I'm Lara Mardell. I'm a lawyer in the international private client team at Edwin Co. I advise individuals moving to or leaving the UK and other people with some sort of international connection. I'm going to discuss the proposed changes to the UK's taxation of recent arrivals to the UK and look at what people might do now in the light of these changes. Um, and as a general disclaimer, this is very much a general overview. Uh, the actual rules and proposals are themselves very complex. So what are the proposals? Well, they've been widely publicised. They affect non-domiciliaries, which broadly means individuals who are from outside the UK but are resident in the UK. And the proposals also affect returning Brits. Currently, non-domiciliaries have the option of the remittance basis of taxation, which means they don't pay UK income tax or capital gains tax on their foreign source income and gains, provided they don't bring those to the UK and they have that available to them for up to 15 years. The government has announced that with effect from next April, this regime will be replaced by a new regime on foreign income and gains called the FIG regime. And this will apply not just to non-domiciliaries, but to anyone who has been outside the UK for over 10 years. So this is simpler than the remittance basis, but only lasts for four years. Now, the government has also announced changes to inheritance tax, but those are particularly vague, and I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail on those in this talk. So those are the government's proposals, but the Labour Party has announced that it is very broadly in agreement with them. So one thing that does appear to be the case is that the remittance basis is going to end very soon and probably from April 2025, so many current remittance basis users will be taxed on their worldwide income from April 2025 if they are UK resident at that time. Uh, there will be a risk of double taxation for quite a lot of individuals and new arrivals will have the foreign income and gains big regime for four years and this seems to apply to UK domiciliaries as well as non-UK domiciliaries. So people will be wondering what should I do? Now, don't wait until the rules are clear. Uh, I would recommend planning with your advisors now. There is actually quite a lot that we know and quite a lot we can advise on. The first category of people who we can advise are non-domiciliaries who have been resident in the UK for over four years. Now, they will lose the right to the remittance basis some of them would have used it, some of them wouldn't. Some of them would be relying on the remittance basis to protect them from double taxation. Those individuals will need to look at whether tax treaties will continue to provide that protection or whether they risk double taxation. In theory, tax treaties should prevent double taxation, but in practice, sometimes they require restructuring in order to do so. And next, you can look with your advisor at what the tax will actually be, taking into account treaties and other relief provisions. Often you might find the tax is less than you think. If the tax hit is too high, you might want to consider non-residents and take advice on the statutory residence test. You may find that you can still spend a lot of days in the UK and have a lot of connections, but still be non-tax resident. Nowadays, with remote working, people are more internationally mobile than they were, say, 10 years ago, so this is a lot easier than it, it would have been then. We have clients who are resident in one jurisdiction but working in the UK, for example. These things are becoming more common. And another thing you might want to take advice on is whether you should elect the remittance basis for the current tax year, i.e. 2024 to 2025, not only because it's still available and might be useful to you, but also because it's been announced that rebasing for capital gains tax purposes will be allowed, but it appears that in order to claim that rebasing, individuals might have had to claim the remittance basis either in this tax year or, or sometime in the past. And the next group of people who might want to take advice are non-residents who spend a lot of time in the UK. Now, those individuals, if they're non-domiciled, might be quite relaxed 
about spending time in the UK and becoming possibly inadvertently UK tax resident because it might not make a great deal of difference to their tax position anyway. This is going to change with effect from 2025 because becoming UK resident, even for just one tax year, will start the four year clock ticking and the clock will keep ticking even if you become non-resident the following year. So you'll need to take advice on the statutory residence test so you can be clear exactly how many days you can spend in the UK before becoming UK resident, which will enable you to either remain non-UK resident or to become UK resident in an appropriately planned way. Now, the next group of people who can benefit from taking advice are UK domiciliaries who have been outside the UK for over 10 years and who are considering returning because you are actually in a better tax position now or with effect from next year than you would have been otherwise because it does appear that you will be able to use the new FIG regime for four years. You may not have had that sort of thing on your radar before because you wouldn't have thought it would apply to you, but you could certainly take advice on that now. And finally, trusts. Many of the proposals are likely to affect trusts. Any trust with a UK connection, uh, be it a UK resident set law, beneficiaries, trust assets, trustee, we would recommend that you get advice in advance of the rules changing. It's very difficult because there are all the variables involved to give general guidelines, but we should be able to give specific recommendations in specific circumstances. We may need to look at, for example, restructuring the trust, making distributions, restructuring investments, possibly terminating the trust, or if the set law is UK resident, but thinking about becoming non-UK resident, they may want to consider bringing that forward, bearing in mind that they can still probably spend a lot of days in the UK. That might improve their own and the trust's tax position. So despite all of this uncertainty, there is a lot that we know, and there's a lot of advice that we can give. Any non-domiciliaries who are resident in the UK or considering relocating here or spending more time here, British people returning to the UK, trustees or anyone who is involved with a trust which has international and UK connections, it's definitely worth taking advice now and you can plan accordingly.